Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and in this video we are going to draw watercolor fall trees in Procreate. And just a quick disclaimer, I just drank a big cup of black tea and I have way too much energy so I can already tell this video is going to be quite entertaining to watch to say the least. <laughs> so anyway, open up your app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. Feel free to use your favorite brushes. I am personally going to be using the brushes from my Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox, which I will link in the description below, along with a promo code just for you guys. So the first thing we are going to do is create a new layer. Well, I'm gonna hide this example here. Create a new layer by clicking on the plus icon here. And you are going to select the main color that you want your tree uh, leaves to be. So in my case, I want a nice bright orange, maybe a bit more yellow than this. And you are going to pick the basic watercolor brush or any other watercolor brush that you have that you know is pretty basic. <laughs> and you're just going to draw the main shape. Ooh, <laughs> sorry about that. You're just going to draw the main shape that you want your tree leaves to be. So if you want a really tall tree, you're going to just draw a tall shape. If you want a thick tree, you're going to draw a big shape. But basically you're just going to, you know, go ahead and quickly sketch the general shape that you want. Once you have that, you're going to zoom in a little bit and make your brush fairly, fairly small. And you're just going to go around the edges and add some little uh, leaves poking out just like this. So just go all around like this and uh, feel free to pause the video and take your time to do it because I'm going to fast forward so you don't have to <laughs> watch me do it all. Once that is done, you're going to do the same thing but very roughly and quickly inside. So you're just going to basically add some squiggles inside your shape. Does this look crazy? Absolutely. <laughs> but bear with me, it's normal, that's what we want. We're just doing this to add some sort of um, natural feel to the final product. So get out your inner child and just <laughs> add a bunch of squiggles on top of your shape. Now we're going to make this look a little bit less crazy by blending in the edges while still retaining some of the color variation that we have. So go ahead and select the water blender if you do have the ultimate watercolor toolbox. Otherwise, um, use this blending tool here. And with the blending tool, or with the water blender set to a fairly large size, you're just going to really quickly go over um, the center part of your tree. So you might have to go over twice to really fully blending um, the harsh edges of your squiggles. But what it does basically is, is it does two things. It helps give a watercolor feel to your piece um, because you have some really cool shapes that are being created, kind of like what pigments would be doing on paper. But it also helps creating the illusion that there are uh, clusters of leaves within your tree. So once that is done and the center is blended, you still have the edges that look weird. So go ahead and make the size of your brush uh, smaller again and zoom in and just kind of, might be a bit too small. Just go ahead and blend in the edges as well. So feel free to once again pause the video and do the step on your own time. I am going to fast forward and meet you at the next step. So once we have something that looks um, <laughs> not as crazy anymore, <laughs> we're going to add even more color variation, just kind of like if the leaves were um, starting to change color with the season. You know, they don't all change um, color at the same time and it just looks like this really cool fiery stuff. So that's what we're going to do. And the way to do it is go ahead and select the selection tool here, set it to freehand. And focusing on one side of your tree, you're going to draw a fun squiggly shape here. And you're going to feather it somewhere around 40%. Going to the adjustment panel here, select hue, saturation, and brightness, and make the brightness a little bit, or um, lift up the brightness, I should say. And you're gonna shift the hue towards the right slightly, and you're gonna see that it's going to make your color a bit yellow in that selection, which is what we want. 
And you might have to lower the saturation a little bit because it might tend to, it might start to look a bit neon. Once, once you're satisfied with what you have, go ahead and click on the selection tool again to erase the selection. And once more, because we are going to do the same step, but on the other side of the tree. So go ahead and draw, draw a fun squiggly shape that you're going to feather once again around 40%. Going back to the adjustment panel here, hue, saturation, brightness. This time we are going to shift the hue towards the left to get more of a red hue. And we're going to lower the brightness. And you might play with the saturation, um, either lifting it up or lowering it, depending on the feel that you want. Great. We're going to do this step twice more. So new selection, but this time we're going to focus on the bottom part of the tree. And we're going to feather it only around 20%. This time we're going to just lower the brightness slightly. Maybe lift up the saturation just a tiny little bit. And finally, ooh, my iPad uh, luminosity just went down. Sorry about that. Um, Finally, we're going to do one more selection, but on the top part, again, feathering it around 20% and lifting up the brightness this time. Maybe lowering the saturation too. Great, we have something that starts to look really, really good. But if you look at the example here, or if you look at a real tree, which would be even better, you see that, um, the leaves are not just like one big block, they have some sort of holes in them. So going to your layer panel, we're going to add a mask. And without getting into too many details about what masks do, just kind of know that it's going to help us protect and keep this shape intact. So tap on the layer and it's going to open this menu here. You're going to select mask. And what that does, it creates a layer mask on top of the layer. So whatever you erase on your layer mask, it's gonna look like it's actually erasing the color. But if you go and hide the layer mask, you see that the color below it is still intact. And so that is a really good way of kind of hiding parts of a shape that you colored before, but that you wanna still make sure that you maintain um, the original shape in case you don't like uh, what you're erasing. So we're just going to erase some holes in the leaves of the tree here. And believe me, you're gonna wanna erase more than you think. <laughs> um, it might be a bit scary to do, at least it was scary for me for some reason. But in the final result, it makes such a big difference and actually looks way better if you do erase um, some sections. And the great thing with having a mask is if there's a section that you feel like you erased too much of, since it's on a mask, you can kind of undo it very easily. So you would go and select your brush and set it to um, like airbrushing brush, soft brush, and making sure it is on a pure white color, you can just kind of go over and you see you're kind of gating back the color that's below it. Um, but that might be a bit of an advanced thing to do because, yeah, I don't want to dive in too deep about masks. But if you have questions and you're wondering about masks a little bit more, uh, leave me a comment below because I would love to do a tutorial covering really the way masks work, but it's just not going to be this one because otherwise it will last for way too long. So anyway, I I'm diverging. Uh, once you have your uh, spots erased in your tree, what we're going to do is add some more watercolor effects. If you don't have the watercolor toolbox, I recommend that you just skip to the next step. I will um, add the timestamp here. <laughs> but if you do have the watercolor toolbox, go ahead and create a new layer. And we're going to access the PNG splotches that I was mentioning in the, be the beginning by clicking on the tool icon here. And in the add section, you're going to click on insert a file. I'm already in there, but you're gonna to have to locate the watercolor toolbox on the iPad, and the way to do that is go in the browse section here and type in watercolor or watercolor toolbox, and it should show up as a either a zip file or a folder like this. If it's a zip file, you just have to tap on it and unzip it. But if you've already done it, it's gonna be a folder, which you're gonna click on, and then you're going to access Splash's PNG here. 
and you're just going to pick one that you like the shape of. The color doesn't matter at all, we can totally change that. So yeah, go ahead and pick one that you like the shape of. In my case, I'm gonna go with, um, yeah, this one. And it's gonna import on your new layer. And with your fingers, you can place it over your general tree shape here. And going back to adjustment panel here, your saturation and brightness, again, you can shift the hue until you get something that matches with your tree. In my case, it was already kind of a yellow orange, but if you pick any other one, you can totally shift it here. And I'm going to lift up the brightness just a little bit as well as the saturation. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And then going to my layer panel here, I am going to click on the N to access the blending modes. So you can totally play around and try to find a blending mode that you like. In my experience, I find that uh, linear burn looks really good. And I like to lower the opacity a little bit, um, around 50%, just so it looks a bit better. And you see that if you hide this layer now, it just is adding some really cool kind of watercolor extra texture. We are also going to add uh, my favorite step, <laughs> which is the salt brush. So go ahead and go back to your main shape layer here. And you're going to pick the salt brush from the Ultra Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox set. And the color of this brush doesn't matter at all. All that matters is that you drag the brush from a transparent section or a white section towards the inside of your colored shape. And you see what it does? It adds some really cool white speckles on your, your creation. And it just adds a bit more texture, and especially in this case, um, kind of feels like it's uh, more leaves and, and holes in the tree. We're also going to create a new layer, and this time making sure you have a nice bright orange selected. We're going to add some splatters. So select the splatter brush with a fairly um, small to medium size. You're going to add a little bit of splatters on and around your tree. And we're also going to change the blending mode of this layer, so clicking on the N here, setting it to linear burn, and what it does, it just kind of um, blends the splatters a little bit better with uh, what's below them or behind them. We're almost done. Uh, you're probably thinking, Genevieve, there's no trunk, it's now a floating tree. You're right, so you're going to add a trunk by creating a new layer and picking a nice brown color, a dark brown color. And we're going to put that layer below, oops, below the leaf layer by just clicking on it and dragging it. And we're going to select the soft grainy watercolor brush for this and set it fairly small. And we're now going to draw the trunk by doing a bunch of really thin strokes. And you want to kind of layer them. And that's going to mimic the effect that you would have on, on um, tree bark, basically. And once you have your trunk, you're also going to extend some secondary branches in the tree. And you want them to be a bit squiggly. You don't want them to be perfectly angled and straight, otherwise they will look absolutely weird. And the most important thing that you want, and I see a lot of people that don't do that and it just doesn't look right in the end, you want some of the branches to overlap. Because right now they're all like separate and that's, that's all nice, but <laughs> trees all, but real trees don't have separate branches like that. They have branches that overlap and kind of blend in with each other and look a little bit messy. That's, I mean, that's nature. <laughs> so go ahead and do that. And you can also add a bit of soil um, below here. And we're going to go back to the water drag set to a small size. And this time we're going to blend the straight edges a little bit too, but only following the direction of the trunk. So instead of going all over the place like we did with the leaves, we're just going to go vertical 
And that's going to help reinforce that idea of bark. But it's going to kind of take out the digital aspect that the brush might have a little bit. And you can blend in the soil here as well. We're also going to erase parts of the branches that we just created. So going back to your eraser tool, making sure it's still on color shifting blushes, you're just going to go over and erase parts of the points of the branch on the outside, just so they blend a little bit better with the rest of the artwork. And you're also going to erase parts of the branches where the color is a bit darker. Kind of like, um, you know, the leaves were thicker in these spots and so you wouldn't see the branches quite as much as where they have holes um, within them. So, yeah, just quickly do that. Nothing too precise, you just want to kind of soften them a little bit. Once that is done, we have one last step. And it is to add a bit of color variation on the trunk. So with your selection tool, again, freehand, you're going to select one half of the trunk. Oops, making sure that if you have soil, you select the soil as well. <laughs> and you're going to feather it around 15%. And hue saturation brightness, we're going to lift up the brightness on the one side, as well as the saturation. Kind of like if the sun was hitting on one side of um, of the trunk and you can move the hue a little bit as well if you feel like it. And we're going to create a new selection on the other side that we're going to feather around 15% as well. And hue saturation brightness, this time you guessed it, we are going to lower the brightness and you can decide whatever you want with the saturation. You can just leave it there or lift it up, that's really up to you at this point. So there you go, that is how to create a watercolor fall tree in Procreate and there are so many different shapes that you can draw. Um, I mean you can see you have two examples here but really feel free to go on Google and get some inspiration for tree shapes and get creating. If you do use this tutorial I would love to see the results so please make sure to share them with me either on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. If you liked the tutorial give it a thumbs up and if you have an idea for one you would like to see in the future make sure to comment below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every week.